Hey everybody. So today in honor of American Thanksgiving, we are going to be talking about the data around charities. Now I'm going to share the charities that I am supporting this season, but please, I want everybody to be aware of the other amazing movements out there, the other charities that are helping those in need. Please, if you do support anything, please put it in the comments below so that the rest of us can check those out. And I will also say that I am committing myself that however many likes this video gets on YouTube and on LinkedIn, I am going to be donating an equal amount to the charities that we're going to go over in this video. So please give this a like so that we can all pitch in, share this so everybody else can see some of these amazing charities as well. Now, a little part of my personal story is that when I was growing up, the people in my neighborhood, including my own family, really depended on the food bank to help us out. And so this is something that I wanted to share because I really believe in these two charities. They are doing so much good work. Some of the data behind this that I think a lot of people aren't aware of. What's the scope of the problem? The scope of the problem is actually pretty large. And it's not just a problem in the US, it's a problem internationally. There are over 860 million people worldwide that are suffering from hunger. 50 million of which are in the United States. Out of those people, about 17 million are kids. So my challenge to you is let's check out this data and let's go farther. Let's make it better. Let's step up and do what we can to reach new heights better than even 2019. Because if there's anything that 2020 has taught us, in my opinion, it's that a lot of people are hurting, a lot of people are lonely, a lot of people need help. And if you have the ability to do it, step up with me and let's go and do it. So last year at this time, when there is the day of giving, it usually happens right after Cyber Monday, there was over $116 million donated. So Feeding the Children has something that I actually feel is, is a pretty cool project. It's called the Two Turkey Challenge. So this is where you buy a turkey for yourself and you buy a turkey for somebody in need. If you check out my haul at the end of this video, I actually participated in this. I gave a local turkey to somebody in my local community. The other thing with Feed the Children is it's not just about children. It's also about you know, the education, the teachers, um, those essential needs that the kids have. They have disaster response. They have healthcare and water and helping people find jobs. There's a lot of different things that these charities are trying to accomplish. So in 2020 alone, Feed the Children has affected 6.3 million people. That's just a fraction of the total, but it's still pretty big impact. Out of those people internationally, there were 4.7 million people in the US alone that were affected in a positive way through Feed the Children. And what was that impact? Over 68 million pounds of food, which is completely, you know, boggles my mind how much food that was. All of that food you know, it came out to about $30 million worth of food. So if you can't do something physically, do something digitally. It's totally acceptable. Anything can help. And it's not just food. There was $4.7 million worth of educational materials for teachers this year that was donated. It's a pretty hefty amount. A lot of teachers, they have to spend their own money on getting materials for teaching, especially now that everybody is doing a lot of remote learning. So if you have a teacher in your neighborhood or in your circle of friends, please make sure that you support them. Over 800,000 students were positively affected by Feed the Children. And what are some of those international locations that Feed the Children are helping with? El Salvador, Guatemala, Haiti, Honduras, Kenya, Malawi, Nicaragua, Philippines, Tanzania, Uganda, 
and also the United States. These are communities that are hurting and some of them are in your own backyard. Some of them could be your neighbors. My ask is be kind. Ask if someone needs help. It doesn't have to be food. It doesn't have to be your resources. If your elderly neighbor needs help shoveling snow or raking up leaves, ask. Go and help out however way you can. Now let's switch gears to Feeding America. It's another one that is near and dear to my heart. So Feeding America has been around. They're celebrating their 40th anniversary this year. It's fascinating how they have grown from 1979 to 2020. Before, they only had 3.9 million pounds donated a year for food. This year, they have over 5 billion meals that have been donated. That's amazing. When they started out, they only had 53 food partners. These could be grocery stores or chains that actually have food distribution. Now, they're over 500 different providers. 1979, they only had 11 food banks. So small. Now, they are up to over 200, which is a beautiful number to see, and I hope it keeps growing. And their impact has been amazing. Their network serves over 40 million people each year through all of their food banks. So when you donate to your local food bank, that is really what you're helping is this Feed America. Something that is really important is when you are donating food, try to make it as healthy as possible. Just because somebody is in need doesn't mean that they don't have the right to eat well. Feeding America has guaranteed 70% of their food is classified as healthy food to encourage. This is good food according to the USDA My Plate regulations. Is there so much food waste in this country? When I was in college, I really struggled to get food. And there were times where I was a waitress and I wanted to salvage the food um, that was going to be thrown out at the end of the night. And I was told I wasn't allowed to take it unless it hit the bottom of the dumpster. Why is that okay? That's not okay. So thankfully, people are starting to realize this. And at last year alone, over 3.6 billion pounds of food was saved because somebody made an agreement with a restaurant to get that food and then distribute it to people in need. If you own a restaurant, if you are somebody that works at a grocery store or a place with a bakery, bakeries specifically have end of the day bread that they are usually throwing out, don't throw it out. Give it to somebody that needs it. And this is a big shout out to those partners in crime that are helping give back to their local food bank. Apparently realtors are stepping up their game. They are the highest out of everybody else with 1.4 billion meals donated. After that, it's federal programs are helping also in this space. The third is actually a beautiful story of farmers. 622 million meals donated by farmers that had fresh produce. That's amazing. And the list goes on. And if you are somebody that does own a business and you can help participate in some of these, please reach out to your local food bank. All right, so that is just some of the highlights of the data revolving around food charities, specifically Feeding America and Feeding the Children. If you are interested in either of these, I'm going to put links below if you want to go and check those out. And please share your stories, share your charities that you are supporting this year. If you don't have the resources to donate your funds, donate your time, donate your resources. I actually filmed my Thanksgiving food haul to my local food bank at the end of this video. Check that out and go and help a neighbor. Go and help you know, somebody that's elderly that needs help with something. It's just that time of year that we really want to give back and should probably happen for the rest of the year as well. And with that, I want to thank you all 
for giving me this opportunity to talk to you about something that is very near to my heart. And together, let's up that ante and let's all step up to the plate this year and help each other out. All right, so it is Thanksgiving shopping time at the local Shaw's. Got my dunks, gonna drink some of this, then I'm gonna mask up and we're gonna go and we're gonna get some food for my Thanksgiving dinner and hopefully some Thanksgiving dinners for a lot of other people. Let's go check it out. Injectable butter. I think I've seen everything. I wonder what that even tastes like. Now I'm gonna pick up some treats for those that are working at the food bank. Not the cakes. Little mini size things. These are my favorite. So maybe I'll get some of these. All right, let's go. Do, 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 do. Ah. Cranberry orange. Ooh, ooh. This thing's so Anything with cranberry and orange is good. Mm -hmm. Banana. Do I eat banana? Yes, I eat banana. Yes. I'm getting, I'm getting distracted. Okay, focus, focus. Cornucopia of broth. Chicken broth. The mother load. This is where we're going to stock up cranberries, chicken stock, all the canned things that you could ever want for your turkey dinner. Because you can really doctor this stuff up. Maybe I'll do some recipes for that. All right, let's see here. We got green beans, We've got corn. I think I'm just going to clean out all of this. Let's do it. Where is it? Yeah. Alright, all done. There, There is the haul. There's the haul from today. And now we're on our way to drop it all off. I want to thank you very much. And you have a great Thanksgiving.